Yeah. They can worry about it and have some money <laughs> put away. There you go, right. <laughs> well, I will get hold of the uh, efficiency for mom and see when they can come up. Mm -hmm. well, you've got her contact. And I work from home, so I'm pretty flexible. Okay. So did, can... Did County give you a rough idea? Did they say they thought a rough number? 46000 seems like a lot of money to me. Maybe I'm out Dude of Dude says he knew more than that. He did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, County Oil was mm -hmm. saying it. They haven't given me a bid. I've, oh, they didn't? I thought. No. I've been, oh. I've been chasing them for two or three weeks. and They, oh, they were supposed to get that did. before this meeting. Okay. Yeah, well, I know. They were okay. supposed to give it to me before this meeting, too. But yeah. I haven't heard a thing from them. Okay. They've been uh, pretty elusive on the... Um, I, I expect it's going to be a lot higher. I don't know why, but I get that feeling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go. Suggest that we postpone the yeah. uh, the uh, vote on the uh, boiler until efficiency Vermont uh, gets to meet with you, and then hopefully County Oil gets you the the other bid. Guess how much money we yeah. raise a year with that. She can be pretty impactful if she wants to be. So she's saying now she wants to uh, uh, jump on board and you know, stuff. And, yeah, it's pretty, yeah. So I, I've seen her out. I've seen her. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, I know. You know, like I say, uh, we've been postponing any people signing up anybody for events past 1st of December or so. Yeah. And I expect that'll be case. Let's see what we can find. And again, like I said, we've got to answer to the, uh, um, to the, our constituents and, uh, and that uh, uh, we want to make sure that all the bases are covered and stuff like that. And I think you can understand that. And you've been in enough situations. I remember you on the rail trail years ago. And, you know, when we we're working on stuff, you have to be responsible for everything and mm -hmm. stuff like that when you want to work together type of thing. So, Thank God there was a work crew around back then. <laughs> you don't have one now, do you? Um, on the books, yes, but no people, the court isn't sentencing anybody. Uh, yeah. They're yeah. just kicking the can down the road. So, yeah. yeah. So, right, otherwise, I'd be making an offer with you. <laughs> Got that type of work, I love to do. Yeah. I love to do all that type of work. Yeah. I knew if I could, if we could put that 5 8 sheet rock up. Well, we did it for a, um, a little after school program type thing there. We renovated the old fire station in Morrisville there. We were working on that when COVID hit, and we did all that. So, well, I'll have to, we'll be finding grants for that anyway, somewhere. Yeah, we'll we'll, yeah. That. yeah. Uh, that's down the road. They do yeah. stuff like that so, anymore. You know, we don't. Volunteer. Volunteer. They don't want that. So it's pretty much all got to come together. Yeah. You know. Pretty much we, now. <laughs> we could go up in the attic and, and lay out plastic on the, you know, and, and insulate on that. In fact, it would be better if we did. That meaning that it would retain no. the insulation so it wouldn't fall through yeah. type of thing? Yeah, well, and it gives you an air, an air barrier. So. Another thing you could do, Al, just a, a suggestion is put down the fiberglass and then put the blown in on top of it and it would do the same thing. Yeah. That's true, but it'd be hard to get. You got about this much room. Yeah, I had to hold the guys slope. by their ankles when they're putting the screws in those collar ties and stuff <laughs> up in the corners there. Yeah. Yeah, but so. well, you got that slope that goes down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can push. There's back insulation down okay. there. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Can sure. we get going? <laughs> yeah. I think we got what we need here. You're gonna meet with them. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm good. Okay, Al. Thank you for your time. Okay. Okay, town assessor, E and O. Oh, I need to, uh, part two of that agenda item is the North High Park. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know if we... Oh, yeah, fire For the fire truck. truck. Uh, I was in here at 13th, but I think the summary is they're looking for both towns to approve 14,000 of ARPA to make up the difference on the small pickup replacement truck for the rescue. Yeah. Hundred twenty-eight thousand for the new one. Hundred thousand on two trades. At least twenty-eight divided by two. Right. Well, they just they came in and said ARPA because everybody hears ARPA, so it's free money as opposed to where else we could take it from. And if they're lucky, they'll get it all sold and they won't actually need anything from it. Correct. Us, but, uh, yeah. 
and I, Which I, I think, bet they, I think they will. I think they will. I think they will too. I, I, I guarantee. Fourteen thousand was a was a max. I, I, yeah. I even at a I, I, even at a median, I guarantee we're five ten. It, it yeah. might be a month or so. Or yeah, and I think we're gaining twenty years on a truck. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I think it's a great idea. The only thing that scares me is we're replacing two trucks in one year. So back to that replacement twenty five years from now. Are we, are, we, are we grabbing hold of a big animal later? No. I don't know, but you guys know more than I do. Hard to know that yeah. range. Yeah. It, regardless, they're, they're, they're going down in replacement costs. The, the, to replace the, the big truck was a $300,000 yeah. replacement, not a $100,000 replacement. Yeah. So. yeah, I think Brent was specifically asking for approval so he knew the backup plan was right. available. Right. And then he'd order them tomorrow or right. something. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, is he ordering both trucks tomorrow? Is that what you, I don't care about? Yeah. 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 Sound like That's what he said. I'm sure he's gonna call in the morning. Say, so can I get up? Can I get on it? So, so what do we do? We need a motion to approve up, up to fourteen thousand dollars spent through our money. Well, you're you're right. You're, you're obligating under the yeah. U.S. Treasury rules yeah. fourteen thousand of your seven hundred thousand yeah. to the North Lake Park Inc., yeah. which is a private entity, which is very similar to North uh, Fire District Number One. Right. Are we obligating? So that means they, they keep that money no matter what? No, I mean, it's up yeah. to you. Up to, okay. It's always a max, yeah. and they yeah. have to shoot up you know, expenses to offset yeah. that. Okay. The important thing about obligating is you have to be clear on what it's for. So you yeah. want to be able to say, or whatever you want to do, but you could say, this is for the $128,000 vehicle. Yeah. Up to, not for any other piece of equipment, or gotcha. not for yeah. E2, but it's for a specific vehicle, and if you don't spend it all, we take the obligation to reduce that. Right. Uh, with the fire district number one, we've worked out the subrecipient agreement that the town attorney had to work on to transfer the ARPA reporting requirements to the outside entity because they're not a town entity. So that would be a condition of them signing that subrecipient agreement, similar to what the fire district number fire one signed. So we just need to make a motion? Yeah, it's the ob obligate and the subrecipient agreement. I'll, the I'll make a motion to do that. Say so moved right now. All in favor? Second. Yeah, second. Yeah. All in favor of signing a fight by saying aye. 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 Any be opposed, abstaining? Yeah, you have it. Who <laughs> said? That was a much better speed. Yeah. Response to union request? That's where I'm, or the EO first. Yeah. Just do the town assessor and we don't miss it. Right, they were seven thousand or something. Yeah. Do we just need a motion to approve those EMOs? That's all. Yeah. Okay. Done. I made so the motion. So moved. I'll second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, abstaining? Aye. Let's see. Those things are in here, by the way. To be signed. There's one more here. I'm sorry. I didn't see this other tab until I was passing it over to you. There you go. While, while you're doing that, um, Chastity gave me some handwritten notes for the minutes, and they weren't included in your packet, but I have, when we get there, I have those paper copies. One of her notes which wasn't part of the meeting was <laughs> need ARPA summary report. Right. <laughs> I was like notes for myself. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, oh, that was my note. So in this, in this packet, there's basically three things. This is the cover sheet for Hyde Park's, where we're at, how much money we have, how much money we're waiting for, what the main projects have been. Perfect. And then 
after that is the NEMRIC expense reports that Jennifer maintains. Great. And the third part is the state of Vermont's ARPA expenses for all the towns that reported in April, along with the state of Vermont ARPA projects. So we have this kind of thick packet of statewide projects. Oh, great. To give an idea. Yeah. Cool. Thank, Thank you for that. Lots of reading. Magnifying glass, if yeah. you want, I can send it to digital if you read better on digital media. Magnifying mm -hmm. glass for that later. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Ron. Yeah. Uh, and Jim. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, it is interesting to see where the towns are going. Yeah. Uh, Linda Martin from Wilka is upstairs. And she said they are buying all the rest of their 901 signs so they can do the town of Wilka. Oh, nice. We've been doing 3,000 a year, and the sign number has been going down due to cost because we kept 3,000 this week. Yeah. So I asked Brad, I said, Brad, what, where are you at? What's the number to finish this silly project? That's an important project yeah. Yeah. that we've been picking at for seven, eight Forever. years. Forever. I haven't gotten a number yet, but I'm guessing it's around 10 grand or something. Oh, if yeah. we wanted to finish it all at once. But then volunteers are doing it, so you kind of need to yeah, spread it out. Oh, that's it. <laughs> so it kind of works. And then we're buying another set. Costs are going up, but volunteers are going down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian, I think you signed in the wrong spot. Did I? Yeah. Oh, I just assumed because he was chair, he was on the other side. I didn't even pay attention. You signed in the, the signature of Lister Assessor. In oh, yeah. No way do I want that role. Yeah, right? You didn't, you didn't date. What's that? You got to put the date. Oh, Jesus. What did you put it down for? I, did, I don't look forward to anything. Even the day. <laughs> Post dating checks can get you. Help me out a little bit, will you? <laughs> Just a little bit. I'll date this one for you here. There you go. <laughs> what are friends for, yeah. right? Oh boy, that does get small. Yeah, yeah, no, it is, <laughs> it is definitely. Okay. Okay, so now we can start the. Uh, the next one was the union request wage adjustment back in. Yes, we finally received, which is with great apologies from the town attorney, the memorandum of understanding, which is the document that both parties need to sign to make any adjustments outside of the union um, bargaining. So I have one copy, but Brian, you can read that. So <coughs> has this been a brought to their attention yet have we have we so this MOU is the first one okay. this is the result of many you know waiting a lot for the town attorney because she was busy in vacation and all that stuff but also trying to put into words the fact that this is not a reopening of the contract and this can all be in public because it's going to go public by the vote anyway right so. yeah uh, it provides two payrolls to to make a payment just in case we miss the next one for error. Oh. Yeah. If there's an error. But we should be able to get them in the next payroll, which is next week, if you so approve. I would sign this, and then we wouldn't actually initiate any payment until the union sends back their signed copy. Okay, thank you very much. And then I'll give that to Jen in that process. But so, do they know this now? No. Or no, this is no. okay. This is the outcome this of all is the. It's so finally published. They made their request in July, I think, or something. Okay. Right, so if they turn around and say that no, we don't want to sign. Right, then we'll. I don't know where we're at. Then we'll, yeah. Okay. Then we're back to the contract. Oh yeah, okay. nothing changes. Basically. Yeah, it doesn't change. Yeah. Right. Be waiting. Yeah, the, any kind of wage request this time of season and environment uh, is almost to be expected to a certain degree, whether you're hiring somebody new, which we did just experience. 
or within internal staff just facing inflation. So it's not a it's not a something that's off. Yeah. But it doesn't does it come from our funds, though, correct? Uh, That's what we agree from our funds, sure. Yeah, we yeah. agree to it. Retention. Yeah. Idea, Retention. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see on that list where some towns have done, um, they had, one town had to recognize employees for the difficult COVID challenge based on their hours they actually worked and the risk, risk level they faced. So they must have a two factor. Should I clean up? What? Should I clean up? I would put yeah, in that's right. Yes, you would have, right. With, <laughs> with everybody that was COVID all over the place, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the people yeah. in the hospitals would be higher rank and the people that were remote work would be low rank. You know, I think that's what was their idea. Mm. But you'll, you'll see that. It's kind of that ARPA report from the other towns. Is, you should really read that because we're getting close to making some of those same decisions. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And you may like something some other town did. Or is doing. So if, if the board's agreeable to that um, memo, then I think there's more people with it now than do. It's all around. I agree I with you. Yeah. It's yes. all around. It is. But if you're agreeable to that memo, then you would have a motion to authorize me to sign and send it to the union and see what their response is. Which I'll probably do tonight just to get it moving. I, I'm in agreement with it. Okay, okay. I'll make a motion to. We agree with that and give and authorize Ron to sign it and get it moving. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining. The ayes have it. Should I abstain? You. I abstain. Municipal Town Assessor, well, uh, County Planning Commission. Yes. So they are uh, just scheduling wise meeting tonight on whether or not the Tasha and her crew, um, payroll people, and would be allowed to administer one more employee with the cost shared by the participating town. So that is on, as far as I know, that's on their agenda tonight. Uh, Condition on their approval, I Park could also approve moving forward with LCPC as the payroll personnel manager um, with all the costs proportionally paid by the hour. So if we have one hour of that person's time, we pay that cost. We don't pay you know one fifth of the whole person. We pay what they actually work um, yeah. for the okay. time. Yeah. Uh, the, Pay rates are around 30-ish, I think, with benefits. And everything's shared. Nobody's taken up more than they, you know, it's all equal or rated. Uh, I think the intention is to advertise in October and get somebody in for the November, which starts the update process for the next grand list. It also gives them at the end of December, which is the deadline for a lot of final changes to the 22 grand list. The E and O stop in December, so if we're really going to make any changes, we have to make sure something's here. Sort of go through the fine tooth comb. The higher town assessor, which is Nemrick, has been working to finish the grand list because they had a lot of E and O errors that they needed to do because they did the error, so they or omitted it or whatever happened. So they've been finishing that up, but they haven't been in the office much lately. Mm -hmm. Uh, this person would take over that role. If the whole thing blows up and the regional planning doesn't want to do it and no town wants to do it, then we'd have to renew or negotiate back with Nemrick for a new contract. Right? Or some, we can open it up to other vendors as two or three that do the contract if Thomas says it were. Mm -hmm. um, or we just continue with Nemrick if they're willing. I, I think there's probably if we negotiate some terms with the town office staff people who have to deal with it directly. So we need a motion on the hybrid position? Yeah, I, my suggestion was approve up to eight hours under the new arrangement. And then that can be adjusted over time. But we have such a backlog, plus we have other things that we want to do better. Mapping is behind, 
some of this things that town office people have been doing should be on the town assessor, you know, those kind of things. So until we really, having one or until we really know, um, up to date was the suggestion, and then basically just leave invoices in the warrants to LCPC. Okay. And hopefully full compliance with the state of Vermont rules, which is what we're really doing. Exactly. <laughs> That's the most important part of the That's what we plan. need. I will make a motion to for the eight uh, up to eight hours a week proposal proposed position. Yep. Yeah. Town municipal, municipal assessor position. There you go. We have a second. I'll second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any are you opposed? Abstaining? No, he's happy. Set goals for FY 2024, town budget, discuss uh, priority projects, discuss staffing, and impact of inflation. Well, that sounds like a full meeting. Jesus. That, yeah, when I was reading that yeah, before, I thought. So maybe it's more of an approach discussion. So I really did, I mean, we have new Jennifer, who's totally new to budgeting. She's been to one budget rep webinar. Yes, given her the Excel sheet, but it's it's my work. It doesn't have to be her work. We talked today about what you all want to see and how you want to see it and how it's easier for her to uh, do her work, basically. So right now, just to give you a little one specific issue, the town budget is presented to voters at town report. That page is five or six pages. It's an Excel file that kind of squishes together 50 pages of Nemrec into those six. So it's kind of meant to be user reader friendly. You want to know what the highway costs? You go to the highway page. Right. Yeah. So if NEMREC is used, very unfriendly, very long. The school department does it too. They have a standard program. And if you look at the school report, it's just pages and pages of line. How do you, you can almost see images in there. I know. So the, <laughs> it the, it's so fine print and just, you know, it's kind of nice looking, but it's just like, yeah. you don't even want to try to start looking at stuff. Yeah. And there's probably three people in the whole district that actually would go line by line trying to figure out what the heck is in there. Yeah. And then 95% is mandated by the state or federal government. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. So, Very true. So it's like futile. Yeah. You know, either vote up or down depending on how you feel about budgets yeah. a lot of times. Our budget, we tried a little bit more, but the problem is, is the interrelationship between an Excel file and summarizing NEMREC data, and then Jennifer taking the summary and dispersing it into those, let's say 150 lines compared to 50 lines, because they're, they're, they're combined. So you almost have to have a little key in between. You know, this line the voters approved was 10,000, but it really it's made of five or six NEMREC lines. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about that today whether the board wants to uh, see the NEMRIC reports, which they do have a budget to actual is posted online, which is more of a budget, but it gives you percent spent. You would budget from that kind of a format, and that would be the format printed in the town report, which isn't too bad. I mean, they're not so disparate, you know, or disjointed that it would be impossible for a reader to, to get there, but it's just more information and and maybe it's better to print the number report, the same thing that you look at for your budget to actuals on a monthly basis, rather than summarizing it. I don't know. So that's kind of where we got stuck today. We're not quite sure what, what approach to take. Continue with Excel or try to have a decent number report, which sort of makes things easier on the, on the back side, if you will. Your reviews match the town budget. I, per, I think the summary is better I because agree. most people are not going to um, you make it any more complicated than it is and they're going to get lost and it's going to end up being like the school budget. People aren't really going to, they're going to feel as though they know what things cost and how much money is being spent. So I think while it's more work on the back end, I think it makes it much more user friendly and that's what we need to have. Yeah. And that's what they're used to, too, if that's what they, you know, that's, that's what we've seen no, in the town true. report yeah. all these yeah. years. Well, and we did a couple of changes so that we have the real costs and things. Yeah, so, so right, that, then right. Then. So I suggested to Jennifer, I said, that if there's things in, in the difference between the NEMREC file that she has to work with every day and the six pages in the town report, which the voters approved, 
if there's things that we can tweak to make your job easier right. in the Excel file, then we need to do that. Right. You know, these three these three things. Let's, let's pick um, uh, health insurance. You know, health insurance is broken up. There used to be one big number right. four, four or five years ago. Right. We at least broke it into departments, so that right. department now has a real total cost better because healthcare is right. in there. It used to be out of there, so all the departments were like deflated by healthcare. Right, which is a lot. Which yeah. is a lot. So the more that she can see, and she just did the first one for the 23 budget because she had to bring all that stuff to the Emmerich from the town report, and she did it, and she knows where the problems are. So I think we can sort of mid middle ground it a little bit. Oh, good. Yeah. Perfect. So the budget, the budget may get a little bit longer. Yeah. But the budget that's a budget line item that's approved will be on your budget to actual. And, and that's where you'll. That's where you'll see the discrepancy. You'll say, you, if you had your town report out, yeah. you're like, well, what, that budget doesn't match my report from Jennifer. Yeah, right. It's right. because it's been combined or merged or something else. So the more we can break that up, there still may be a few combined, mm -hmm. but we can highlight those and you know that those are combined or something. So mm -hmm. I, I think I think that's okay. I think we can do that with this new new process. So we're going to start working on that in October. We're going to. After tonight, I have to put the memo out to all departments with the schedule. We have library coming, and these guys will come with their ten thousand or five thousand ad. We have, those are the things that we're trying. To, we have a meeting that we're trying to set up with the committee. If anybody needs help, Jennifer's meeting with library tomorrow about the budget process. So she, we're trying to get out to the departments so that they have improved reporting and reliability. Matt had an issue during before he was on the board with what's my reserve. Yeah. Right. We should be able to produce other. So we're trying to get to that point where we can need to meet, just like I'm talking to you about what you want to see. We have to meet with all the committees and departments so they know what we can do and what we can't do and what they would benefit from. So I think that it would be nice for us to be able to report back to what some of the committees like, like I know for me previously, I didn't know what I even had to make the request. You know, so it'd be nice to report back to the rec or to the, the fire department and say, hey, we're headed into budget season and you need to make a request to hold XYZ in reserve. Yeah, so my memo that will go out is FY24, budget season's here. Here's the things that you need to do. And that will give you some pointers and Jennifer will get that. And she'll be available to meet with everybody to, to do, do whatever communications need. The bigger question, which always gets lost during the budget seasons, it's what, and you guys have a, a sort of a power, just like you were talking about tonight with the furnace question, to stop or push projects. You can do that with the budget too. You know, you could you could say, you know, we're, we're, we're really good with uh, that example. Police services, you know, we think a million dollars is plenty. Let's just cap that this year and send that message back to the sheriff. That's not going to happen. But that's the that's what you do at your level. And if the voters say no, 1.2 million, and they add 200,000, and Tommy can take to the police service. That's not the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. The practice has been going to each, bringing them in, having it hashed out with their best guess, telling them to get to zero to three percent, or hard to do a six percent, eight percent inflation, and then meeting them on them on the bigger items. The overall goals for the town are, le are the thing that gets lost. We're almost in the deep in the weeds too much. Susan, I think the last uh, one of the meetings you were talking about, uh, not having property taxes come from commercial lease. Where's it going to come from? It'll come from a four million dollar house on Brook Road or a seven. We actually got caught. I heard on NPR this morning as I was driving in, matched the, the real case that I heard the day before in my office, which was somebody in the middle of building a house. They started without a mortgage because they're using their cash first. And the bank said, you, you don't qualify anymore because the housing price from their original appraisal went up to the no, 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 the real estate market going up. Oh, and man. their income going to pay the taxes <gasps> on that new appraised value. And that was exactly the radio report that the number of mortgage cancellations and deals like up by three or four percent in the last six months because people are losing ground on their, their incomes aren't keeping up with the price of the house that they want to buy. 
So, you know, those those are big things. And you know, how do people afford a house? I don't I don't you gotta do it if you can do it, you do it quick because things move too fast. And the interest rate, of course, adjusting push people out. But anyway, I don't even know how I got in that track, but so all these all these things are like, fact. Yeah, these all these things are like what does the town want to see for the town? Do you want to make it easier for low income? Do you, you know, these are way above a lot of the discussions that this board has had. Susan had the had the one insight that I was. If the board admits there's no commercial development, do you try to fix that? Or do you focus on housing and try to make it a more desirable place to invest in with a big big house with 2.2 kids? Okay. So it pays for itself. And and I don't know. Big house it's, probably, it's probably three or it's probably three or four hundred thousand at least to cover a kid's cost at school. Yeah. Well, and not raise the taxes. Yeah. Hmm? Nice second homes, you know. I don't. Great I, place for second those homes. Those are people I mean, I, there. I don't think two million dollar houses are the ever said what the they're goals putting the zilch are. impact you know, on the town. They're things. putting like, kids in a school. Project they tend to be really happy, yeah. so they're generous. So how much effort do you put in as a board? Do you put money behind it? That's who we're at. We're never going to be. Or do you go some other direction? We just don't have the infrastructure to be commercial. Right. Well, I'm just going to say, yeah. 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 <laughs> but some of the goals that the town has are in the town plan, some of the goals are in the budget, and some of the goals are generated here by project, like the Rail Trail Art Project or helping the Guy and Valley Hall become a community center. But they're not cohesively done in a master plan that, yes, we're going to invest 400000 in that building over the next 10 years. That's not happening. We're going to invest 70000 in the Rail Trail. That's happening. But it's not part of we want three rail trail things to draw people to Hyde Park. We want to go steal the village's brewery and bring them up to you know, North Hyde Park. You know, we don't talk about those things. Right. You know, we get the RFP went out yesterday for the for the school district offices to relocate. Do we want to work with them and find out a way to work with the school district to maybe locate them here and we'll go to Main Street? I don't know. We don't talk about that stuff. But those are all things that would get put into the budget. Right now, the only thing that makes it to the budget are some like grant projects usually, because we can match. Right. But we're not doing it. We are doing it cohesively on highways. We are looking at the whole system and making upgrades as those things can happen. And we're checking off a lot of boxes on highways. So we're right. in good condition without any major risk to the system, which is a good place for any town to be in. But we're not we're not doing a lot of those other things that we that I just mentioned, except for the piece of do contribute to a better high park. Yeah, for sure. But right now we have two thousand dollars in community events in the budget, so there is some select for community support for small community events. It's not ignored, right. and we try to help. Like Liz wanted two hundred dollars for the music event this weekend. Yeah, that's what that community events line is. Don't have to come out of their operating for heat and <laughs> Wi-Fi. Right. And they do have programs. Programs than she wanted to use. So anyway, so I'm just I'm, I'm trying to. That's the budget discussion that sometimes doesn't happen. Yeah. And just to let you know that that does happen. And that ARPA list that I gave you is part of that. If you look at that ARPA list and see what other towns are doing to make their town better or more yeah. sustainable, more yeah. resilient, you know, more welcoming to underprivileged people or housing needs people. Yeah. Those are all in there, and you could pick at those. Yeah. Some of it, it's meant to be in the town plan. I just I tell you, I have not looked at the town plan to say, select well, here are your voted and approved goals. Yeah. <laughs> and that plan has expired in two years. Yeah. It was an eight year plan. <laughs> so you can tell we're not using the plan. Yeah. But you will find things like work on Main Street, better connections to the rail trail, which are happening. Right. That's, yeah. how, that's how those grants happen, is because there's our planning documents behind right. those goals. Right. So there is, a, I'm not saying there's no plan, but there's, talking about during the budget process is what's been missed. It's almost like a free-flowing year-round effort, <clears throat> and some of it gets tidied up at the budget time, but more could be done. So 
Anyway, please review the ARPA list. That will help you in goal setting for the budget. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What goes in the budget? What goes in the ARPA? <coughs> what do you want to find other grants for? What do you not want to do? That's always a good question. Yeah. Stop doing what you're doing is always a valid issue. Mm -hmm. Don't do any more though. Do this instead. All that kind of stuff. Our goals that the board can set through the budget. You pull the funding, the goal stops. Basically. I'd like to see that put on the next, next agenda. Well, it, so we can keep it motivating and keep it moving because I think it's important to the town. I could, I could definitely pull from the town plan what you already have. So you That's see, because everybody exactly. has access to that. Right. And that is a real document that both boards, the trustees <coughs> and the select board and the planning commission spend time on. Some of it's happened by osmosis. Some of it's been ignored because it just some conditions changed. But they should say that with, with certain things happening huge in Morrisville, it can impact us. It can overflow onto Absolutely. us type of thing. And if we're not ready for it, it can yeah. impact yeah. everybody. And there's a lot happening in Johnson too. Yeah. On the other side of us. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll just I'll make a note just to continue. Yeah. Be part of it, not yeah. absorbed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And your job is to look at the ARPA list just to get background for that discussion. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. We want to be family friendly. Okay. <laughs> no. Review notes uh, from the financial That's how desk. Has made a fortune. RFP Smuggling Town Auditor. They decided they were going to be the best family friendly resort in the country. Sounds like. And that's what they did. Lana's the grant to do it. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm not. You can make money. Sure. I think friendly. she would be willing to do it. She talked to Jennifer about being willing to do it. She's had one extension already to do the 20 the condos they built up there. She had a contract where you took 1920, which was a, which was way useful because we were supposed to go up to bid for 18, 19 and 20. So she's got a bonus three years plus one. Uh, Jennifer and I were talking today about nobody uh, else's. If she's interested in 22, have her bid on 22. Right. Yeah, put it out to bid. And do three years <clears throat> and not tell them that they have two months to finish it, but have a deadline of June 30 so they have more time to, because nobody's going to want, they're, they're going to want the 21 and 20, they're going to want the 2021 done. Right. Before they would feel good about starting 22. So we'll give Glenn a time this fall to finish 21. Bid out 22, 22, 23, 24, and have just 22 doing, you know, obviously do. What was the goal for Glenna to finish that? I saw it here. Yeah, she said that, she said October, I guess. Yeah, Actually, early. I think. But now it's going to be <coughs> Yeah, so it just, it, it's not, it's not an unusual schedule. We've done that over and over again. We've had deadlines of, you know, ideally December for you from the close of June 30. Mm -hmm. to get a report so you can start using those in the January budget mm -hmm. tune up. I don't think that's happened for four years now, probably. It's always been past your budget time. So we have to publish the audited numbers for the voters. We want to get back to publishing audited numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. <coughs> so that was it. We, Jennifer and I were just talking about whether that kind of a plan is okay. You know, just to, you already approved going to RFP about 18 months ago, but right. during COVID and everything else, it just didn't happen. So it's it's not that hard. RFP's drafted, it has to be mailed. The bids would be, I, I almost think in advertising when we're close on the 21, so that when people respond, they can get the 21 by the time that they respond or something. They, they're going to want to look at the last audit. Of course, yeah. And then give them the six months uh, to tax season, so it'll be three months that they can't do it. Right. Uh, and we just bring the, uh, the RFP results back to you for review. Or if you want to do a subcommittee to look at stuff first, whatever you want. I'm sure they all can. Yeah. I'll be the only one. You'll be the one. I'll be the geek that wants yeah. to look at it. Yeah, just because. Yeah, that's well. Right. <laughs> Every committee needs a geek. <laughs> right. Second. <laughs> so should we just make a motion to um, kind of I or we need a, to just have you guys continue to discussion that we're going to proceed with our okay. committee. It's overdue. We just got to get it done and then we'll bring back results to you. Okay. And Jennifer can summarize it with you or if you want to look at them. We may do interviews if we get more than one. 
Sure. We get none. That seems like the going trend a lot these days. Yeah. A lot of firms are stopping taking new people, so we may end up with Glenn in the end. Right. Which isn't terrible. Just it's, yeah. it's good for Jennifer to see somebody new. Yeah. Think. I think it's always good to Or the town in general. The town in general. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's been over 10 years with one person who's yeah. not healthy or, yeah. or not wise. Or something yeah, there's a, yeah, they say <coughs> you should switch. And actually, I think it's 7 to 10 that they say you should kind of switch. So. So I'll just make a note that the board's cool and we'll move it forward and then we'll uh, okay. come back. Mm -hmm. And the town warrants, they've all been signed, everybody signed them. We can bring them back up here and we'll uh, get them gone. And Thank you. Motion to approve the town warrants. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining. Okay, let's see. In the minutes. Um, I'll make a motion to approve those since I was the one that wrote, wrote them out. <laughs> and Ron did and a good job. Well done. And Ron thank did a good job typing them up. So <laughs> unless anybody's caught something maybe that I didn't write down correctly, but I thought they looked good. Based on my notes, so, so I'll make no. a motion to approve. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed, standing? I'm abstaining. You're abstaining. Oh, you weren't here. He wasn't here. That's right. One abstaining. Okay. Um, I'll make a Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's, it's a good into the details of budget stuff. Um, so that passed. I think now my budget's half at work. <laughs> yeah, everybody's is. Yeah. I see that guy today, even down the pit. Space. So we want to do the LCPC director appointment? Yep, yeah, that's already voted. Just need signatures of the date. That's fine. Okay. That's right. If someone wants to do something, we're going to take it. That's right. <laughs> Smile. Uh, is, is, is it I right? Uh, if you want to see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to see it. No. He's got a lip. Oops. Yeah. So fast. I would study the owner of that. So fast. Next one's Ten Bins Restoration Project Block Grant. Yeah, I have two quick updates. Mm -hmm. Both are LCCD, the Wildcat County Conservation District, Peter Danforth. Uh, State of Vermont Clean Water Act has block grants given to the Vermont Natural Resources Council. Each county has an LCCD type people that are administering the block grants. They work with the town, so we generally don't see the money unless we get to manage the project. For both 10 bends and the second one, which has been in the works for a while, which is Sylvain Road across the street. Peter has taken both of those projects and worked with Watershed Consulting under this block grant to drop designs. Um, you remember Railroad Street and the flooding down by the Foos property and the Class 4 road out to the Woodlands way at the end, mm -hmm. all that stuff. There's a couple of crossings on the Memorial Valley Rail Trail and an agricultural ditch that isn't being maintained. So the water's backing up, creating this cumulative problem back up into the alfalfa fields that um, landfears can't um, um, use anymore. So all of those issues were rolled into one grant. So Peter's got to the point of getting a preliminary assessment done and now he has to go and confirm 
all the culverts, all the drainage ditches, all the elevations, and come up with some kind of solution to all those different things. Mm -hmm. Part of it will include the class four road upgrade, because that's sinking down and the waters, the culverts are undersized, those kind of things. And part of it will include uh, funding for the private road, which is a couple of big culverts under that road near near the town road, but on the private road section yeah. that are blocked and they're not flowing. How they all do that with wetlands and floodplain people, that's not, that's that's what Watershed Consulting has to work through. Uh, at some point, I think that's going to be totally contracted 100%, except for the railroad street work, which might be the match for the project. Not, it's too early yet. We don't have a design yet. That's the scope of it. So that's the 10 beds update. Okay. The Sylvain Hill I have here, which is uh, getting closer, we're thinking that maybe fall this year we'd have a funding approval and permits, but that hasn't happened yet. So that's a summary of the most current watershed plan for the hill, which is a stormwater rough grade to take the stormwater from the hill, collect it on the hill, and filter it into a stormwater basin at Johnson Street Station. <coughs> And that's a 75% match with 25% town country. Oh. Nope. <laughs> tired now these, these areas where it's going to gather and stuff, that's up in the village? Yeah, come, if you've been up the hill, there's a Y on the top of Sylvain. I don't know if you've ever walked up there. It's a private town road. It's one of those unclassified roads where the town never took it over, but we plow it. But if you go up the hill, which is, it appears to be sloughing off on the side towards Route 15, it might be just gravity or it might be actual dirt, I'm not sure. You get to the top and there's a Y. The Y goes to three houses. Mm -hmm. So the project would end at the Y where people take care of their own Y and have a discontinuance of the road once all of the improvements are done. So we're basically fixing a road that should never have been a town road yeah. and then letting them have it back as a Road with a state grant. Yeah. This yeah. was one of those, this was brought to us in the purple, green, red. No. No. Purple, all the, if you go out on 10 Bends Road, if you've been out there and you go across the bridge, Lamoille River. Yeah, but I don't know if this is part of no. this is no. part of the original no. stormwater. No. Okay. No. Okay. You're thinking I already that was like in the village. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what yeah. I asked. Cool. That's okay. that's okay. the, you're the net zero right. project. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that one is its own thing. This is an add-on grant where we couldn't get state grants until just last year because grants were prohibited from private unclassified town highways. You yeah. had to have a full public highway before you can get a lot of well, state grants. But they put changed, a lot of it, right. Put they a lot of energy, rules. right. Well, and you're trying to get the state to deal with it because if they, but they get say, no, it's not our problem. Yeah, the first design we spent probably $40,000 on and the state denied it because it had a little bit in the state right away. So we had to redesign and pull it back up Johnson Street Extension a little bit to get out of the right way. Which they had trouble comparing with. So it looks like a spring 23 project if all the dots can be dotted and highs and whatever. Okay. So okay, so let's do the Morseville Sand and Gravel. We can Set up an agreement. The one you and I work diligently on. Had a uh, proposed motion from the town attorney and a settlement document written up. There was a motion at the last meeting to approve the con the concept of it. Basically, we didn't have the document, so the town attorney went and tried to draft it. Now that's the tricky part. You can have a big concept, and then all of a sudden you start saying. What does that mean exactly? So for the last three days, we've been talking between Jim Harrison, Chris Roy, who's Jim's attorney, Dave, Dave Rue, who's the town's attorney, and myself, just going over the permit requirements for the DRV and what this Saturday hours really meant. And we were going, we started with hauling only. Yeah. But hauling only to Jim means processing. Oh. So, because he processes into the truck is his, his idea. It's one action of. Oh, okay. He's not making huge stockpiles in there. He's 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 washing some sand or he's 
screening some material and creating it and then putting it in the truck and taking it out. I could swear I remember him talking about needing to store something because he didn't have off-site storage for stockpiling. Whatever. Last three or four days it changed to I need to be able to do some processing. So we ended up defining what he could do on the Saturday hours and what he can't do so that we can have some enforcement capacity. To him it was I want to do everything I do on Monday through Friday. That's what you're just that's how he interpreted giving up those four hours on Saturday. Was I want or five hours. I want to do everything I do on Monday through Friday, which I isn't it was quite just the calling. Point. Was it? it wasn't quite the message that I remembered, and that got into a big back and forth. So anyway, you can read. Uh, no, you can. I'll read. I was going to uh, say, is this agree? Did yeah, Jim this, agree? Yeah, Jim has agreed to okay. this language. Okay. And the town attorney has said we really can't do any more than this, so it's a good way to just be done. With okay. Good. You know? Okay. So what does this? So do? the final, you took your motion, which was yeah. nope, hauling only. And this is what it reads now. It says, hours of operation on Saturday, seven to twelve p.m. Yeah. And are for hauling materials out of the pit. That's where you guys sort of stop it. Yeah. Yep. Including, but not limited to, excavation, screening, and washing of materials. That's what Jim says he does in practice. Okay. Use of loaders and trucks to do that. Working with and relocating materials for stockpiling. So as they wait for the next truck to start, sure. they have to create a stockpile. Using screening and washing stations related to getting stuff ready, but not for crushing of oversized materials. Perfect. And then the second condition is brand new, which is Jim wanted to put in as allowed for the whole operation. He really want to go even further. He want to go Monday through Saturday for blasting. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I said there is no way that right. that has been mentioned in right. the DRV hearing or when Jim was in there. No. Never. No. And Jim agreed to take that out. Okay. I didn't even know they blasted in that pit. There's they, no. They don't. They want to probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I said that's an interesting way to take it out. It was a tactic that they put in there so they get what they wanted. Mark, Mark being blasting in the gravel. Well, I say it's a the gravel pit. They're blasting in there. Yeah, but the legal issue is if you add blasting, it changes the change. It changes the use to quarry. Yeah. 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 And then you're. And we don't have a quarry time. regulation here. We just have to excavation of the natural resources, which is your sand and gravel and making a little bit of gravel and washing stuff and digging it up. We don't have a quarry operation, which under Vermont Supreme Court decisions is totally different than a sand and gravel operation. So anyway, that's that's what it is. That's basically what that it says. Good. <laughs> it was very interesting, take a lot of time, but he was able to get in writing so we can be done with this today. There you guys agree. This goes back to the whole kind of the town's goals being anti-business versus business friendly. Kind right. Of too, so. We need to. Oh yeah. No, the, qu the quicker he can get a permit, the quicker he can go back to 50 and, and deal with that. Yeah. That's the way and that step. is, that will leg out a year on him. We just, we took over a year to get our court. Morrisville's in three years now. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> that like, yeah, that's why I said like, it will leg there. over right. a year. Do you, it was interesting. Mm. If you can get Susan Baird as your district coordinator, you, you can make it right. But if you get anybody else, you are in. You never make any headway. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick, get it out the again. door. <laughs> Before it changes again, quick. <laughs> Staple it into place. <laughs> so this is a, it's a, the proposed motions on the cover sheet basically says a lot of legal stuff to make it public and get it on record. The neighbors who may not like this decision of Saturday because it wasn't in the DRB have two chances still. They could bring this settlement to the Supreme Court and they can do duke it out at activity. They decide not to participate here with you, otherwise they'd be probably sitting over here. Oh right. So where would you sign it? Uh, it's a motion that the motion should, should authorize oh, okay. um, the yeah. town attorney to sign. Okay. You, you guys don't sign the court files. Oh. Town okay. attorney. Do you need to do this? Yeah. Do you want me to read the motion? I move to approve the settlement of the appeal of Morrisville Sand and Gravel's approval for a gravel extraction operation at 480 Garfield Road by amending the permit conditions to include operating hours on Saturday from 7 a.m. to noon with no crushing on Saturdays and no blasting on any day. Second? Yep, I'll second. <laughs> okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? 
you know, he's had it. Okay. Instruct the town attorney to move it on. Yep. Okay. There's that. Nothing more on Menashe's 25 acres or 23.5, whatever it is. No new news. No new information. No new. I think, I think your your comment last time is still true. Waiting for the Howard thought he had more land than he might have, so he's trying to get yeah. that survey still. Oh, uh, so yeah. survey still? No. Um, do you think we should change our board meeting? Yeah, oh. on, the, on right. November 8th. Yes. I think that. As long as we have notice, we can move to whatever date you want. Okay. Let's, can you right. look at that? I think that that would be a good idea. Just, I had already committed to hoping quite a bit, so. Yeah, because we have to. And I, got, I did get the email for the committing. I, I, I can't be here in the middle of the day ever. No. We never Yeah, I can't. Uh, okay. I, I feel bad, but I would love to help Chris Turner. Yeah. No, you can help. We all need counting. Huh? You can help at that's night counting. That's what we're. That's really what they all, want. Us all for. the time forms that she gave in the email. Or no, yeah, she. This was just because yeah. oh, yeah, it said, it that, said that, this that is your responsibility. Just, yeah. Oh, that, that's just for the early processing the early ballots. Come take your the voting, <laughs> voting, voting evening at uh, we started like at seven o'clock. You can come down. And so count. it's. But it most people are flat eight, over, so, so we usually have it pretty well. Right I'm not sure to count I'm thinking, right. yeah, after. Because we'll be setting up for this. No, You'll only have to get to 25. When? Okay, can, can you do that, that with the guy? Yeah, I can see it. That's town meeting. That's our meeting. Oh, I mean, election day and our meeting. Yeah, I would never do so. We don't want to do it on the day. It, it would yeah. probably work for us. Because yeah. Then it's up oh, yeah, yeah. On okay. Are right. we we're looking for if we move from the eighth? What are we doing in here? It, it don't matter who you go yeah. for. <laughs> They're all crooks. Are you guys okay with moving the November eighth meeting to November 9th? Wednesday. Be a Wednesday November, night. It'd be a Wednesday night. Yep. What are we doing here? November eighth meeting. If, if we're voting to move the meeting to the ninth instead of because it's election. the same as election night. Because it's election night. I might be calling into that one because there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to be in Ohio hunting. Oh, yeah. Glad you got your priorities. Oh, my God. I do. Calendar, yeah. Does that work for you, Ron? And yeah. all of your meeting nights? Sorry. Okay. Sorry, right, mate. Cool. Six o'clock. Um, I ain't got nothing. What's well, the now date? you have a meeting. What's the date? The ninth? Yeah. Yes. Wednesday night. There. October. No, I mean November. November nine. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. Anything else we need to discuss? <laughs> no. Everything's good. Better mark that one on the calendar. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Sure. sure. Yeah. All in favor, so